Welcome to Hosanna's Good Friday experience. This is not a typical Good Friday service. We're not together, at least not physically. And today, as we reflect on Jesus' death on the cross, our focus is less on our sin and brokenness and more on the love that he has for us in our distress. He did not come to condemn or shame us. He came with gospel, good news, about our hope of transformation, about the love of the Father, about life and its God-given abundance. And the dark day of Jesus' crucifixion is for us the central part of that good news. So today, today we share gospel for people in need of it, which is all of us. At various points along the way, we'll stop and invite you to listen to a song and then return here following the next link on the web page and so on until we've concluded the service. Please feel free to pause at any time to spend more time with God in prayerful reflection. And note that whether we are praying alone or with others in the room with us, we will use the plural because we are all connected together as one body of Christ through the indwelling Holy Spirit. Let's begin with an opening prayer. God of power and mercy, in love you gave your son Jesus, not to condemn the world, but to save, to rescue the world through him, that we might all be reunited and live with you forever. Bless us as we reflect in your spirit on our mm -hmm. Savior's suffering and death, that we may learn from his example the way we ourselves should live. Amen. Amen. Well, this past Sunday, Palm Sunday, we did not talk at Hosanna about the triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem. The story in which a crowd of his followers and others from the city celebrated his entrance at Passover on a donkey, waving palm branches and laying their cloaks on the road as he passed by them. It is a good an important biblical story for the whole church and for our congregation. In fact, our name, Hosanna, is drawn from this account. This is a turning point story, both joyous and sad, because the entry was both joyous and sad for Jesus. Yes, he had finally arrived for the last week of his earthly ministry in fulfillment of the ancient prophecies. Yet Jesus was not laughing. Jesus was weeping, for he knew that before the end of the week, this joyous parade would become a funeral procession. Though no one in the cheering crowd could have known that in that moment. In five days, Jesus would be executed. And it's likely that some who shouted Hosanna on Sunday also cried out crucify him on Friday. Our human nature can be as fickle as the weather. And it was the weather that we talked about last Sunday instead. We talked about a storm on the Sea of Galilee earlier in Jesus' ministry and what it has to say to a world that has encountered a global storm of our own. Mm -hmm. One we never imagined when we began this new year. One for which we have not yet fully counted the cost. One for which the winds are still blowing this Easter weekend. We sit uncomfortably in our small boats, wondering what will happen to us, whether the storm will do us in somehow. And so we spoke last Sunday of how we are experiencing all the normal human emotions and reactions that accompany such an experience. As Jesus did. See, in the early stages of our faith, we can get so enthralled with his power, right, with his divinity, that we forget his essential humanity. But there's a reason he referred to himself most often as son of man. It's a Hebrew phrase that's hard to interpret well in English, but means something like one of you. He came to be with us in our predicament, just as he walked out across an angry sea in the early hours one morning to be with his friends in their own predicament, in their fear, their, their frustration, and their fatigue. 
And to be with us is to be somehow like us, to do life as we do it, to experience what we experience, to feel as we feel, to know as we know, even now. And that's the Jesus we see during Holy Week. That one who shouted courage to his disciples in the storm-soaked boat was one who had to draw on courage himself when confronted with his own weariness when saddened by the betrayal of his friends, when carrying the weight and burdens of his responsibility, when, when suffering the wounds of his enemies, when feeling the insecurity of his future, and most especially when encountering death itself, the greatest enemy of all. Jesus' path during those difficult five days is indeed one of courage. Mm -hmm. And as we noticed last Sunday, that kind of bold, gentle courage has not come from shame, doesn't come from willpower, not even from action, but it comes out of surrender, out of a surrender to love, a letting go and trust to the one who holds us, the one who calms our storms, the one who shouts above the din of the world, peace, be still. Mm -hmm. And indeed, by the end of that week, the lips of Jesus were still. His heart was still. His body was still. And yet that stillness and death was merely the passageway to peace and life and joy. Because death on a cross, or a storm at sea, a virus that loose in the world, a stock market in turmoil, or any of our hearts beset by fear, none of that can or will defeat the love of God that is loose in our hearts. And so in our service today, we, like those first disciples, will walk with Jesus through his last difficult days. We will see him experience what we too have experienced in our own walk through life and what we may be experiencing this very week, even this very day. Mm -hmm. We will hear his story and reflect on our own experience each step of the journey, praying, singing, listening, and speaking to God as we go. And hopefully we will finish this service together with a bit more stillness, a bit more peace, a bit deeper trust as we surrender more fully into his all-encompassing trustworthy love. He truly is in the boat with us. He's in our world with us. And even though the story we share today is sad, even though our hearts may be heavy, we know that today is not the end of the story. His or ours. And so we watch Jesus surrender in weariness from the Gospel of Matthew. Then Jesus led his disciples to an orchard called Gethsemane. He told them, sit here while I go and pray over there. Mm -hmm. He took Peter, James, and John with him. However, an intense feeling of great sorrow plunged his soul into deep sorrow and agony. And he said to them, my heart is overwhelmed and crushed with grief. It feels as though I'm dying. Stay here and keep watch with me. Then he walked a short distance away, and overcome with grief, he threw himself face down on the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. And let's take a few moments for some personal reflection, for some personal prayer. And if you would like... You can close your eyes or you can read with me the questions that are on your screen, but in whatever way seems best for you. Just become aware of the presence of Jesus, the presence of God. In what ways are you weary? from intense sorrow and grief? In what ways are you weary from your own or others overwhelming pain? In what ways are you weary from holding tight to anger or bitterness or fear? 
And in what ways is God inviting you to surrender to his love for you? So you can experience his hope in even your most exhausting times. God of rest, help us to surrender our weariness into your love, that our souls can experience the sufficiency of your grace, especially when we feel most weak. Amen. We're going to stop this video now. We invite you to go back to the web page and you can uh, reflect a little uh, more deeply if you wish. The questions are also posted there. Listen to the song that is posted um, as well. And then when you're finished, come back to the next, um, uh, the next recording and we'll continue in our service. Thank you.